Yeah, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this uh, Treasury Lab session at the ACT. The tech-led way to mitigate FX risks, automated FX risk management, and hedge portfolio optimization in practice. In the next 45 minutes, we will take a look at the tech-supported, highly automated solution the medical and safety technology company Draeger has implemented to manage their foreign currency risks. And as we speak, this solution is competing with Alphabet, Google's parent company, and Peloton in the finals of this year's AFP Pinnacle Awards. Now, due to scheduling reasons, we had to pre-record this session. But please note that there will be a live Q&A session right after we end. So please collect any questions that come up, and we are looking forward to answering them to the best of our ability. Who are we? My name is Alex Fleischmann. I am head of market development at TIPCO, and I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Mark Blatt in this session with me. Mark was formerly head of controlling at Draeger and was our main contact on Draeger's side during the entire implementation phase. And yeah, welcome, Mark. It's good to have you, and it's always a lot more fun to present uh, sort of side by side with a satisfied client. Yeah, Hello. thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for being here. Now, what can you expect from the next 45 minutes? Well, we will kick off with a very brief introduction of TIPCO as a company and of our solution, the Treasury Information Platform, TIP. After that, we will spend just a few more minutes looking at the theoretical background of the FX management and hedge optimization approach which we will cover today. And after this, Mark will provide first a snapshot of the Draeger Group and their FX risk management approach before we then switch to our TIP demo system to actually show you the solution in practice. Who is TIPCO and what do we do? TIPCO is a treasury solution provider headquartered in Vienna, Austria, and our Treasury information platform TIP has been on the market for almost 20 years now. And as of today, we are serving more than 130 corporate clients with a team of more than 50 staff. And in turbulent times like these, that's probably also an important factor where a financially solid company with considerable growth in the last couple of years while maintaining a very solid and healthy profit margin. Our solution tip covers all relevant areas ranging from cash visibility, cash flow forecasting via guarantee management, risk management, our topic today, to bank relationship management, treasury reporting, etc., etc. And all these areas that are listed here on the right can be supported by smart, highly automated digital workflows. Very quick look at our clients' corporate logos. This is definitely a slide we're very proud of, since besides Draeger, you will spot quite a few listed multinationals, such as British American Tobacco, German Postal Service DHL, German Telecom, Nestle, Lufthansa, and many more. Now, what is the core principle behind our solution tip? We find that one of the main challenges in Treasury today is still having access to all relevant data across the various systems in place, which is why our core competency is definitely to establish automated connectors to all relevant data sources. So we can then use this data to create a group-wide cash flow forecast, for example, or manage group-wide FX risk, FX risk exposures. And in all areas we provide, also the analytics tools and the reporting based on the data we pull from all these various sources. But now, enough with the sales pitch, I would say, and let's start taking a look at FX risk management using TIP. With our solution, we provide you a tool set that allows you to implement a very structured, structured sorry, <laughs> and systematic approach to FX risk management and hedging, which enables you to identify the optimum 
hedge strategy for your currency exposures based on your desired level of risk. Now you probably ask yourself, why the Jenga tower? Well, out there, you quite frequently hear statements such as, we hedge 80% of our exposures in currencies X, Y, Z, or we hedge 75% across all our exposures. And similarly to the game of Jenga, the question is, is this really as good as it gets? Is this really the best move? Or couldn't we do it better in terms of achieving the same amount of risk reduction with fewer deals or at less cost? And this is why in TIP, we combine both. There is, of course, the option of calculating the effects on FX risk when going with certain predefined fixed hedge ratios. Of course, saying we hedge 75% across all of our FX exposures can be a very valid and very good and justified and solid approach. But on top of that, we offer an inbuilt optimization feature that will provide you with the optimum hedge portfolio, which allows you to stay below a certain defined threshold of target risk at minimum cost. And then the statement could be, we derive our hedge ratios by first defining our target risk and then optimizing for minimum cost. And let's just take a very quick look at how this works in theory before then Mark will show more on how this actually works in practice. In a first step, once all relevant exposure data has been collected and consolidated in TIP, and the sort of as is risk or current risk resulting from your FX portfolio was calculated, you can then go on to define your target at risk figure. So based on your risk appetite, you could have decided with 95% probability, we do not want to lose more than, say, 3 million euros within a certain time period, let's say within a 12-month period. Now, this target at risk figure can either be value at risk or cash flow at risk, and the calculation can be performed either using variance-covariance approach or Monte Carlo simulations. Once this risk limit was defined, the next step is to stay within this risk limit as efficiently as possible. Now, efficiency in this context can, of course, mean different things. We could be looking at minimizing the number of individual hedge deals, for example, or we could try to keep the total volume of hedges to a minimum. Or, as in Drager's example, we could look to minimize the cost of hedging. To be precise, we are not talking about bank margins here, but we are talking about minimizing the cost of carries or interest differentials incurred by hedging the various exposure currencies versus the respective base currency. So higher hedge ratios in currencies with higher interest rate differentials or higher cost of carry will result in higher hedging costs. So again, we're not considering bank margins here, but are really looking at interest differentials or cost of carry. Okay, so far we have defined our target risk limit on which our optimization will be based, and we have decided to optimize our hedge portfolio for minimum interest rate differentials. One nice feature of the solution is the ability to further fine tune the calculation. For example, you could add additional criteria and say, we want to hedge US dollar, Swiss francs and yen at 50 to 75%, sort of across a certain uh, time period. And we don't want to hedge Brazilian real, Turkish lira and rubles at all. And taking all these optimization criteria and additional constraints, TIP will then calculate an efficient frontier of efficient optimum hedge portfolios for any level of target risk, minimizing the associated hedging cost, cost of carry. That's basically the three-step approach in theory to what the system can do. So in a nutshell, to summarize, TIP 
can be your Swiss army knife in FX risk management because it allows you to, first of all, consolidate your group-wide exposure data from all relevant systems, flexibly define the parameters that should be used for the calculation of FX risk. You can define the risk KPIs that best suit your needs, be it value at risk or cash flow at risk. And last but not least, there's the optimization feature that I mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago that actually selects the most efficient hedging portfolio out of a yeah, basically infinite number of potential hedging portfolios that you could implement. So far for the theory, but now over to you, Mark, for an introduction of Draeger and the live demo. Thanks, Alex. Um, so let me start with a couple of slides about Draeger before I go into how we use TIP to optimize our currency risk management. Uh, for those of you who don't know Draeger, it's a German company headquartered in Lübeck. Lübeck is a small city on the Baltic coast. Draeger is a publicly traded company on the German exchanges, but the majority of the voting shares are held by the Draeger family, which effectively means that it's a family company. As you can see in the slide, in 2019, Draeger reached almost 2.8 billion in sales worldwide with about 15,000 employees. You can also see that the company has quite a long tradition. Uh, they began selling pressure regulating valves uh, already in 1889. Draeger has two divisions, a medical division, which is supplying medical equipment, uh, mainly respirators, uh, anesthesia devices, patient monitoring equipment uh, to hospitals and clinics. Uh, the second division, the safety division, is supplying products like personal protection gear or gas detection devices uh, or uh, compressed air breathing for fire, uh, other safety equipment uh, as well, quite a large product portfolio of safety equipment. The main product or the main customer segments we sell into are fire services, oil and gas, mining and the chemical industry. But actually, we sell into quite a lot of other customer segments uh, with special applications uh, so that more than half of our revenue is made by a quite large number of customer segments. For example, Draeger supplies alcohol and drug testing equipment to police departments all over the world. Here, having a look at uh, some more figures for Draeger, we sell more than half of our revenue is made in countries outside of the euro zone so you can see where this is going um, this is really about our fx exposure we've got sales and service organizations in round about 50 countries meaning that we have currency exposure in more than 40 currencies and we hedge 17 of these now you can ask uh, why 17? Um, why not 20 or 30 of those currencies? How did you get to that number? Well, uh, Alex has already given you a little bit of a preview of how we got there uh, using the optimization. Uh, but let me go through that systematically and show you how we do that at Traeger. And I'm going to start with a very brief look at our FX currency risk management approach. In our currency risk management guideline right at the very beginning it says our objective is to reduce the group abit volatility coming from fx fluctuations so how do we do that i mean you, you could infer from that that the way to do that if you want to reduce volatility is just hedge everything but that would result in quite high cost of carry so basically, we came to the conclusion after really thinking hard about how do you optimize based on cash flow at risk and, and, and so on. We came to the conclusion that the best solution for Draeger would be to minimize the sum of the cost of carry and the cash flow at risk. And it's easy to optimize cost of carry. If you want to minimize cost of carry, well, just don't hedge. 
it's easy to optimize cash flow at risk if you hedge everything, but then you have quite high cost of carry. So looking at the two extremes, you either have very high cash flow at risk or very high cost of carry if you choose to eliminate cash flow at risk completely. So where do you choose in between that? And we came to the conclusion for us, it makes sense to try to minimize the sum of those two uh, parameters. Now, how do we do that? Basically, uh, we using the TIP software, we start, of course, by generating a cash flow plan for each of the currencies. The way that we do that is we extrapolate the uh, historical cash flow data, incorporating into that the information from the business plan about sales volume growth in different countries and, and uh, uh, purchase plans for the next upcoming year in different currencies so that we generate a net exposure per currency for the plan year. Once we've got that, then we update our market data. In other words, we, we update our time series of exchange rates so that out of that we can calculate FX volatilities and correlations. Once you've got all that information, your plan cash flows by currency, the volatilities and correlations, you're in a position to be able to calculate the cash flow at risk and to generate the efficient hedging curve that Alex described beforehand. In other words, the TIP software includes an algorithm that allows you to identify the, the lowest cost of carry for any level of cash flow at risk you choose. And then using that, we go one step further and say, okay, where do we get the minimum sum of cash flow at risk plus cost of carry? So that's, that's the idea in principle. The next slide make that a little bit clearer. Here you can see in the blue line, the efficient hedging curve. For any point on the X axis, you, you can read up here and, and see for that amount of target cash flow at risk, how much count cost of carry would I have? The orange curve above is just the combination of the cost of carry as measured on the x-axis from the blue curve plus the target cash flow at risk at any point along the uh, x-axis. So you can see here, in this case, you get a minimum here at 19 million in this example. With 19 million, if you were to go to the left of that, you would reduce the cash flow at risk, but the increase in the cost of carry would more than offset the re reduction in risk that you have. If you go to the right, then of course you can further reduce your cash flow at risk, but the increase in the cost of carry is more than offsetting the reduction in the cash flow at risk. So it's, it's a kind of optimum point, if you will, uh, minimizing the sum of the cost of carry and the cash flow at risk. Now that's the theory of how we do it at Draeger. Now, and as I've already pointed out, we do this using the uh, TIP algorithms. Uh, and the best way to show that to you is to move to a live demo. So I'm going to switch over to the demo mode. All right, now we're in the uh, TIP demo environment. Uh, and you have to imagine uh, that I've already gone through the process of uh, getting the necessary data into TIP so that I can do the uh, portfolio optimization. In other words, we've already uploaded the historical cash flows for Draeger. We've enriched that with information from the business planning on uh, expected sales volume development by currency, by country, expected purchase uh, volume developments, so, so that I'm able to plan a cash flow per currency, a net cash flow per currency, and use that as the basis for my uh, uh, risk optimization for the for the upcoming plan year. Uh, and of course, that data has all been uploaded through automated interfaces from our business warehouse environment uh, and other sources. So once I've got all the data available in TIP, I can begin with this uh, uh, optimization process. 
The first thing I need to do is go in and under this tab derivatives and I can start processes with these buttons. The first bit is to set the parameters for the calculation of the cash flow at risk and for the optimization. Uh, to give you an example here under optimization runs, I can set the parameters for the range in which we do go through this exercise of calculating the efficient hedging curve. In this example, we start at 3 million, we go up until 27 million in steps of two. So you, you can remember those parameters. Those are what you'll see uh, in the curve that I'm going to show you in just a minute. Uh, the other tabs here uh, generate market data that will use the historical market data and out of that calculate the volatilities and the correlations. And then these other buttons are for actually starting the calculation calculations to to trigger the algorithms uh, and and imagine then that I have gone through the exercise of of starting these jobs and I have the data available the next thing I'm going to do is go into reports here so I'm going to go here I'm going to do this in another tab so that we don't lose so much time basically I've gone onto the tab reporting and then I've looked under the risk analysis report and uh, that's the result with after setting these parameters and clicking on view report i get uh, several pages of output i'm going to go back one page and show you basically this report is showing the details of the cash flow at risk by currency the report is built such that here in the rows, we have all of the currencies in which we have a, a plan net exposure. Uh, here in the next column, we have the plan cash flows. Uh, here we have the existing hedges for the plan period. Uh, don't take this too seriously. These are just some sample hedges uh, here in the demo environment. I don't want to go through the report in all of the detail, but you can see then you also have two very important columns here. The cash flow at risk before hedging, the cash flow at risk after hedging. Uh, you have the hedge ratio here, and then you have the interest spread, basically the, the uh, cost of carry. So you can see now, if I look at this report before we've gone through the optimization for the plan year, in the case that we didn't do any hedging at all, we would have a diversified cash flow at risk of 27.8 million. And then uh, with the sample hedges that we have in the system here, so here a hedge ratio of, uh, for example, 4.7% for the Canadian dollar or here um, of 7.5%. Uh, These are really just uh, example hedges. With those hedges, I would have reduced the risk, cash flow at risk diversified a bit from 27.8 to 27.1. So, but we have gone through the exercise now of also generating the efficient hedging curve. So you can see here the, res the, the report that shows that. This, this is a report that, that, that uh, or this is the chart that Alex already showed where you can see for each level of target risk, you can see here on the y-axis the corresponding minimum possible cost of carry. In other words, for each point on the target risk, we've calculated the optimum portfolio to minimize the cash flow at risk. So this is the efficient hedging curve that we've seen in, in Alex's uh, presentation and also uh, in my uh, first part of my presentation. The curve up top, as we also know from my presentation that we did earlier, this is basically the sum of the target risk and the cost of carry as measured on the y-axis. So in the case of uh, here 5 million, we would have a cost of carry of 11.1 million. And if I take the sum of those two, the 11.1 million plus the 5 million target risk, we end up with a sum of cost of carry plus cash flow at risk of 16.1 million. Uh, and in this example, this is the optimum 
the optimum of, or the minimum of the combined cash flow at risk and cost of carry. Now we've been through this exercise now uh, several times with the with the TIP software. Sometimes the curve is, is more pronounced in a curve and a, 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 f, a, a minimum we've had further, much further out on the curve in other configurations, configurations of currencies, the weights of the currencies, the volatilities, all that uh, has an influence on the shape of the efficient, cur uh, efficient hedging curve and on the shape of this uh, optimization curve. But in this example, we're at a fairly low target risk of 5 million with a cost of carry of 11.1 .1 to get to our optimum on that curve of 16.1. So you could say, wow, uh, great, uh, we're done now. We've, we've identified the optimum target risk with the corresponding cost of carry and the sum of the two, so we're good to go. What we need now is, of course, the details of this hedging portfolio which set of hedges with our plan exposures lead to this result of 5 million cash flow at risk with 11.1 .1 million cost to carry. And to see that, to see the details, we go into another report, which again, I've already opened just to save us some time. This is a report, the same report we looked at before to show the cash flow at risk before the optimization. In this version, I've changed the evaluation type to uh, sim opt hedge. Those are the fictional hedges resulting out of the exercise that we just went through. So th this is basically the details for that point on our uh, efficient hedging curve with 5 million. Um, and we can see that. We, we've, I already explained the structure of this report, the, the, all the currencies and for which we have an exposure. And you can see down here after hedge with the simulation optimum hedges, we have a cash flow at risk of 5 million and a cost of carry shown here in the last column of 11.1 .1 million. So that's exactly the portfolio that we were looking for here shown in detail by currency. Uh, how do you read this now? Oh, by the way, for this example, we set the maximum hedge ratio, hedge ratio at 90% and the optimization uh, chooses then between not hedging at all, hedging the maximum 90% or choosing an optimum between uh, zero and 90%. You can see in most cases, it was either don't hedge or hedge the, the maximum amount, but we have some currencies, for example, here, the uh, slotty where we've had, where to achieve the optimum portfolio, we hedge with a ratio of 67, almost uh, 68%. So yeah, at this point, we've really got the result that we were looking for. We, we have our description here of the hedge portfolio that gives this optimum. So I can now go to my colleagues at the front desk and they can start trading to realize uh, this set of hedges uh, for the budget year. It's maybe worth mentioning, I mean, we, we started trying to use a cash flow at risk method uh, before we worked with TIP. And uh, I, can, I can assure you it's very, very difficult uh, to, to even get close to this kind of result if you're working in an Excel environment. Uh, we were able to get as far as calculating the cash flow at risk, but certainly not with this optimization uh, approach and, and the generation of the, op of the efficient hedging curve. These are really, really uh, nice features. And I hope you don't get the impression that the only thing we do with TIP is identify an optimum hedge portfolio. Actually, TIP is an integral part of our currency risk management and the monitoring of currency risk and, and FX effects. And basically we use it in an end-to-end -end currency risk management approach. Uh, and let me show you that on the next slide. Okay, this slide shows our current setup for planning, reporting, and management of our currency exposure. Uh, like I said, we spent time today focusing mainly on the hedge portfolio optimization, but TIP is really an integral part of our end-to-end -end 
FX risk management and monitoring. You can see basically we, we stay here in SAP world starting with the ERP. Uh, data from our general ledger is downloaded into the or extracted in SAP Business Warehouse. Basically, we take all of the uh, uh, accounts receivable, uh, accounts payable transactions in foreign currency and use that then to upload into TIP. One for reporting purposes and analysis purposes of historical uh, information, but also for the forecasting and optimization. And then based on that analysis, of course, then we uh, generate our, our hedge portfolio, which we pass on to the team in Treasury. Um, um, we, we have uh, created kind of a download from TIP that we can upload then into SAP Treasury. Out of the Treasury, we get the trades. Those are tracked then in the ERP system. And we, yeah, you can see we've got basically a closed loop of historical information, reporting and analysis, forecast optimization. Yeah, it's really been a huge uh, uh, ramping up of our visibility and our effective management of the currency risk. Good, Alex. Yeah, thank you so much, Mark, for this very clear and interesting presentation of how FX risk management using the Treasury Information Platform TIP is performed at Draeger. And thank you as well for rounding this off with this last slide here, because I think this demonstrates very nicely how TIP is fully integrated in a highly automated fashion in the wider process that starts and ends in SAP as we see it here. Because I'm convinced that this is a very relevant aspect for many of our listeners today who also operate in an SAP environment or at least in an ERP environment in which SAP plays an important role. Our finding time and time again in our projects is that this is actually a key part and a key challenge namely getting the relevant exposure data out of the source systems, out of the ERP, potentially out of a, a separate TMS that may already be in place, collecting and consolidating all of this data in one common database, which frequently ends up being Excel, as you uh, also mentioned in the first step. And um, what we find is that as soon as we successfully automate this process of getting the data out of the source systems, unifying and consolidating them in TIP, then one key aspect has already been greatly improved and already runs much, much smoother in a more timely, fast and reliable fashion. And this is why, before we end, I want to take a look at what you out there, what the treasurers, what our audience today stands to gain from adopting the solution that was just introduced by Mark in the demo. First of all, we are looking at considerable time savings in compiling exposure data. How so? Well, as I just mentioned, our goal is to establish automated links to all relevant data sources which contain relevant exposure data. So we get rid of manual download and upload processes, manual consolidation exercises based on spreadsheets, etc. And we aim and typically succeed to achieve a very high degree of automation in doing all of that, which again saves considerable time every month. By doing that, we avoid errors because we get rid of the spreadsheets that uh, may be in place at the moment. We avoid errors that are caused by incorrect Excel formulas. And, and this is one important point uh, time and time again uh, when talking to uh, corporate treasury departments, that there's typically one person who has all the know-how relating to how things are currently run, how the model is currently set up, how the spreadsheet is currently built, 
and as soon as he or she leaves, uh, one can be confronted with certain challenges in terms of understanding uh, the logic uh, behind the different parameters, settings, the logic uh, between the model of risk calculation, of exposure, compila compilation, etc. So no more reliance on the know-how of individuals. Also, there's time savings in the hatching process itself and in the processing of traded hedging deals. Because typically by performing the optimization exercise that we talked about and which Mark demonstrated in the demo, we reduce the number of hedge deals, we reduce the number of hedge volumes, which means less time spent for the dealing itself and for all the confirmation processes that uh, come along with that. EMIR reporting, to name only one example, um, it's just yeah less time necessary for deal execution and processing. And the same goes for the time spent for revaluation of hedge deals and all accounting related matters. And last but not least, there is significant cost savings that can be achieved. We already mentioned the reduction in cost of carry because this is one of the main optimization criteria embedded in our solution, but also by reducing the volume of hedge deals and the number of hedge transactions, there will most likely be a significant reduction in bank margins as well. And via the efficiency gains across the entire process chain from consolidating exposure data, getting rid of the spreadsheets, getting rid of manual up and download processes, errors, etc. People that used to be responsible for these manual processes will have more time available to spend on other tasks so that over time, over a certain period of time, with this new process, there will be a significant reduction in attributable HR costs as well. But now we have reached the end of the session. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your interest. And as I mentioned at the start, please feel free to ask your questions via the text-based Q&A, the Q&A chat box that you have on your screen. If you have not already done so, we are looking forward to receiving and answering your questions. And we are also looking forward to learning more about your particular requirements in FX risk management and beyond. And I would also like to invite you to stop by at our virtual TIPCO stand in the exhibition hall to learn more about our solutions. Until then, take care, stay healthy, and all the best. Goodbye. Yep, thanks also from my side. Bye-bye.